Someone wants me to build the iSpace Station. But I'm not a fan of Apple products. Hello, Kerbal Nauts. I'm Laura Beta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to the LSS Large Space Station. No, 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 no. That is not ISS. That is a little LSS. I don't have it. Apple owned space stations here. How they got their space station to be named ISS, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, that's just joking around. Let's get this up. What I decided to do was try to build a large space station up in orbit around Kerbin. No, I'm not doing the, the International Space Station, not around Earth. I haven't got that to that far in Kerbal Space Program yet to decide to do it real style. No, I'm going to do it the Kerbal way. And I've decided to do it with extra mods like, um, oh, what have we got here? KW Rock Crew Rocket Pack with the new tanks. You can see the new fairings. And I messed up when I first initially launched this thing. Because the fairing of this, once you separate the, once you initiate the separation of the fairing on the front, which meant when I separated the fairing, the rocket on the, the space station on the front would separate from the entire rocket and I wouldn't be able to get into orbit. Or at least I didn't have enough uh, thrust to weight ratio to get into orbit. And that's what we're doing here. In fact, did I have another rocket? No, I don't think I did. This is the entire launch stage. It's going to get the entire thing up into orbit. However, I have devised a way to reduce the orbit, or at least deorbit the main rocket, as we should see by here now. You can see, as we separate from the station, the rocket fires retro engines and deorbits itself. Anyway, let's get to the station. I love using the offset and rotation tools to create these awesome, I don't know, setups. This is the crew cabin. As you can see, you've got the um, the hitchhiker pod with all the extra hitchhiker connection thingamajiggies there. And what we're doing here with, uh, what is this? can't remember if it was Jebediah or Bill. We're going to try and push this out the way. Deorbit this base, get it away from the station before we send something up there. Yeah, I didn't think about that bit, did I, when I was doing this? I was going to try and do this properly where everything which we didn't need, like a rocket or whatever, would could easily be deorbited like I did with that stage, using the reverse thrust. That that rocket stage, by the way, didn't fully deorbit. That was just because the reverse thrust got it into the atmosphere. But if you're not in control of it under a certain part of the atmosphere, then it won't deorbit. So I had to go back to it and stick with it as it deorbited it. In fact, I used the engine to deorbit it a bit more so we could get this awesome re-entry effect. Yeah, this is part of the um, our re-entry effect mod. I can't remember what it was called off the top of my head, but it is absolutely cool. It gives you sparks and gives you the trail there. Obviously, it doesn't look right if you're not looking at it at certain angles, <laughs> but it's cool nevertheless. And I was wondering if you could have a Kerbal watching from a distance, seeing that re-entry. But I don't think that would work because the ships aren't actually loaded in unless you're close by. But now let's launch up something else we can add to the station. This is going to be short videos, by the way. And perhaps we can go, go into a bit of space station history. Now, you may think the Americans were the first people to build a space station into in orbit around the Earth. But that is completely wrong. A couple of years before Skylab, the Russians sent their first space station called the Salut 1 up in orbit. And oh yes, <laughs> I forgot. This is version 1.2 where you have the probe control thing. Which yeah, because we haven't got crewed ship this time, that means we needed antennas. I did put antennas on this. I keep on forgetting to do that. I can't remember I cheated and set this to not need antennas. But I did add antennas to the craft this time. <laughs> ah, newbie mistake. Anyway, the salute one was the salute. I go keep on saying salute. Was the first Russian space station, the first space station of Earth. And really, the Russians are the pioneers of space stations. They're the ones who worked out the way that space stations are built today from Mir One. And well, going back to the salute one first. The first uh, Soyuz rocket, with crewed rocket, which was launched up, were unable to dock with the space station, which means they couldn't dock with it, they couldn't do anything with it. So what they had to do, they had to deorbit, come back to Earth. They boosted the station up a bit higher so it wouldn't degrade its orbit that quickly. 
so then they can send another mission, which was uh, Soyuz 11, I think, at the time. However, th they successfully docked with the station, and they conducted science and everything that they needed. It was a successful mission. However, when it came to the orbit, the parts which they separate on the Soyuz probe so they can go into the, you know, the safe section for re-entry, I suppose you could call it, Basically, they separated the parts of the rocket, and what happened was a valve was stuck open. So they were due to re-enter the atmosphere. This valve had opened, which means that pressure was being lost. And what this, what this valve's purpose was, was to equalize the pressure in the cabin as they were descending. Because you don't want the full Earth pressure in your rocket as you're going up into orbit or you're deorbiting. No, what you want to do is make sure the pressure is equalized as you get to the orbit that you want, I suppose, to the to the altitude that you want. So less pressure in your space means less chance of your rocket or cabin exploding because of the high pressures inside. But anyway, this valve stuck open and they suffocated, basically, which is a shame because they had a successful mission. But later that, uh, I think that was in 1971-ish, 1972, uh, off the top of my head that is. But Skylab wasn't launched until 1973, and in fact that was after the Russians launched their Salute 2 mission uh, space station, which they were dubbed a DOS for Durable Orbital Stations. And the cool thing is, they worked out that they could do multiple dockings, they could uh, basically build upon the station by docking other units, other modules to it to build a larger space station. And that's how Mir was born. The first proper, I, I will, in my theory anyway, the first proper space station that was up in orbit. And that's what, that's how the ISS came around. <laughs> I can't now stop, I can't stop thinking of the ISS as if, you know, the iPhone, the iSpace Station. <laughs> oh, damn those jokes. <laughs> anyway, what the International Space Station is supposed to be doing was multiple uh, countries coming together, building a big station, doing microgravity research to basically enhance mankind. Things like Velcro was invented. At least I think it was invented by uh, the space program. Teflon was invented by the space program, as far as I know. A lot of things were invented by the space program, but they don't have patents for them. I'm not sure who holds the patents or how, you know, why didn't the United States use this as a chance to be able to, all right, we can make money with this, we can pull that money back into the space program, because hell, we're messing up our planet. We can go to space, we can go to Mars, we can colonize it. But oh no, they didn't. But no, they didn't. Anyway, the mer the achievements of the International Space Station is awesome, by the way. And I can't... We can't downplay it. I know a lot of people say, ooh, launch, and then they don't get interested. But playing global space program, and being a space lover myself, a sci-fi lover as well. I can't help but be in awe at the stuff we're doing. I love the look of this station, by the way. At this point, I was going to dock this on the side. This is going to be the power unit with the extra stores and everything on the side. But what I've decided with this module is we'll dock it on the bottom of the station. We'll boost the orbit up to about 300 kilometers. And basically, it was because when I put this up into orbit, about 100 kilometer orbit, I realized that it doesn't give enough doesn't give us enough room to launch up another module and try to set up a rendezvous from a lower orbit. No, you have to think of that first. Ugh. But luckily we do have enough Delta V on this rocket to do that. But for us off, we have to dock. And the way I dock, at least a quick guide to docking. First off, make sure you're away from the docking port. Give enough space for your docking maneuver. And then boost towards it. Normally I rotate the camera so I can use the control I, J, H, K and well, I, J, K and L and H and N to boost backwards and forwards to go to maneuver towards it and then once you've got the target in your nav ball 
use the prograde vector point towards the the target marker perhaps a bit over so you can align yourself quicker and then come close enough wait for the magnetics to take over and then you can dock just take it slowly that in fact took me about 10 minutes i suppose or probably five minutes i think because i'm used to docking so it used to take me ages normally i'd come close too far no that's too far over that way too far over the other way oh you overcorrect. now you go over to the other way and oh balls you collided with the station yes it does take practice docking is not an easy thing not first off anyway but anyway what we have to do is get us into a 300 kilometer circular orbit so let's get this over i've given this control to mech chip here because i didn't trust myself normally when i try to do a circular orbit like this i say it rightly make a maneuver node Ooh, slightly overshoot overshot and then boost up what i should have done was boost up and then you can use your rcs to get your orbit correct right that's 301 by 299 anyway if you like this video crank that like button like an engineer subscribe if you want more of these type of videos suggest what uh, modules we can add to the station and uh, perhaps we can make this a bit more interesting than this traditional space station as we're starting to do here anyway i'm orbiter trust me i'm an engineer